In this video, I'll show you the easiest way to hide a Next button, but have it immediately available on any slide revisits. I hadn't thought about this way to deal with uh, next buttons in forced navigation. And what I mean by forced navigation is when you want to prevent a learner from moving forward until they have viewed the entirety of a video or watched all the annotations that you've placed on a slide. But I received this message. Is there a way to have a button appear after a video has been watched? I've tried multiple different ways and have watched many of your videos, but I'm still stuck. We previously had buttons simply appear after X amount of time in Captivate Classic, but this function seems to be missing now. It's not actually missing, but I've actually thought of a better way to do this, specifically for slide video. Let me show you. Okay, so I have a very simple soft skills training course that is predominantly based on videos. So I've got this blank slide after the title slide, and I'm going to add a video to this slide here. Uh, but this could be any content. It doesn't have to be strictly video. It could be a bunch of annotations on screen that are all timed based on the timeline. And you want to make sure that that next button is not shown until all of that content has, uh, has been displayed to your learner. So let's start off by going to the Add Media Blocks icon in your toolbar on the left here. And specifically, we're going to choose Slide Video in this case here. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on the uh, Replace Media icon in the middle of the default video there. I have a video in mind, and I'm going to select System, and we'll select that from my Videos folder there. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add an interactive component, specifically a button block, and we'll select that and we'll set it up to be two button blocks and we'll distribute the buttons uniformly there. While I'm here, of course, I can select the media block up above and select auto fit so that it uses most of the slide space here. So first thing we're going to do is create our back button. And the interaction for the back button is to go to the previous slide there. So we'll do that. And that's from the more menu and we'll choose our next button, label it next and its action will be go to next slide, but we'll also hide this button during publish. So this button won't be visible the first time we arrive on this slide there. Now here's the cool part is that I'm going to open up my timeline and decide when I want to have that next button appear. So this slide is looks like a little less than 21 and a half seconds. So I'm going to say one second before the end, I'm going to place my playhead there. And in the bookmark swim lane, I'm going to click this plus icon here and we'll call this show next. Now that's going to create the beginnings of a slide interaction for that point on the timeline. And I'm just going to double click on that and select the action to be show. And we'll choose the next button here and select next. And what this will do is it will play this slide up until this point on the timeline and the action run by the bookmark will be to show the next button. The great thing about this is that if I go to the next slide and then for some reason decide to return to the previous slide, I don't have to play the whole video through to see that next button. It will be available right away. Let's go ahead and close our timeline here. So we're pretty much good to go. The one thing I'd recommend that you do is anytime you're doing forced navigation, go into your TOC and play bar controls go specifically into the play bar and either turn off the next button from your play bar here or disable the entire play bar so that the only controls the learner has are the ones that you provide them through button interactions. So I'm going to go ahead and close this here and let's go to slide one and we'll do a preview of this project so you can see how this works. 
Okay, so here's the soft skills training title page. We'll click on begin and we start our video. And of course the next button is not visible in output and it will run approximately 20 seconds, which is the uh, rough duration of this video. And then as we get to the end of the slide, we will see our next button suddenly appear. It should be any moment at this point here. And we'll go ahead and click next and we go on with the rest of the project. And again, like I said, the cool thing is if I press the back button, that next button is available right away. So I'm not forcing learners to rewatch the entire video if they've seen it once already. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.